Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this is section four of chapter six. Um, I'm not sure this video might have two parts. I'm not sure how long it's going to be. Um, but there's basically three things I want to do to our project. I want to actually, well, let's just open it up first. That would help. So let's start the real server. Open up Chrome. Okay, do some organization. So we want to go to localhost 3000. And here's our app, our blog. So the three things I want to do is first of all I want to get this search working. Uh, second, this here is just static. We want the author's name here. Um, and then finally we we'll want we want some comments. Uh, I'm actually going to get rid of this link because the comments are going to be on the show page right underneath the post. Um, and we'll also have a form there as well. So let's get started. Um, let's tackle this search first. So what we're going to use for the search is a gem called Meta Search. Uh, it's one of the m most popular uh, and easiest search gems to work with. It, it's a full text search. So what we want to do first is add it. We want to add the gem to our gem file. So let's go to our project files. and open up the gem file and we just want to add um, right under we can do it right under the active admin we just want uh, gem meta search make sure you have those in quotes so save that and then we want to go to our we want to go to a new command line not the server. And we want to do a bundle install. All right, so now the gem's installed. Um, I guess I can tell you a little bit about how MetaSearch works. Um, it adds full text search to any resource we want in this case it's going to be the posts and what it does is it wraps it'll wrap the post active record model and it'll provide us methods that will allow us to build up search conditions um, against that model against the post model um, and then there's a few extra form helpers that we can use to sort and supply multiple parameters um, to our conditions yeah, it, it sounds harder than it than it really is. Um, so the first thing we want to do, well, the second thing after we install the gem, is we want to go to our controller. Okay, um, we want to go to our post controller, and that's in the app folder, controllers, and post controller. And what we want to edit is the the index action this shouldn't be here this test variable so right now we have post we have a post variable that's getting all posts for us all right so above this I want to create a search variable and that's gonna go to post dot search and then we want our param we want the search parameter and this is what meta search allows us to do is use the syntax and then we don't, we don't want post to go to simply post all we want it to go to search all now so that should be it for the index action um, yeah that looks good so if we save that now what we want to do is actually take away this HTML search box, which is just uh, 
just a placeholder really um, and put it in a dynamic Ruby search box so we need to go to we need to go to our app folder and then views and then in partials you'll see a sidebar HTML file and you can see we have the form right here it's just a standard HTML form I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna grab and paste in the Ruby form that we need to use which isn't very long and it's not very difficult to understand so what it does is it adds a form uh, and we give this variable f to use within this block in this form block um, and we defined it as a text field just like we did in, in whatever other forms we've done in this in this app um, but what we want to add in is this right here this symbol right here which is title or body contains and what this means is in our post model or our post table we have a title and we have a body and we have some other stuff but the title and the body is all we want to search for we want a, a full text search in those two fields so in those two columns and this is the syntax we use which is really very self-explanatory um, we want to search this text field for whatever we put in the text field and we want to search the title or the body for that so if we put in car in the text field it's going to search the title and or the body for the for our car and it'll give us the posts back that have the word car in the title and the body so that's all this does so if we save this and reload it's not going to work yet and the reason it's doing this is since this is in a, in a partial it's not right in the post controller I mean the post view if it was then this would be enough but it's in a partial so we actually have to claim it in the the core application controller so we need to go to our controllers and the application controller is the root of all the ones we created it, all these controls extend the application so we want to put some stuff in the core application controller and just like we did with all posts in all categories because our sidebar also had categories and posts and we had to add these helper methods um, except we're not going to add a helper method we're going to add a, this before filter and then we just want to define we just want to create a method we'll call it site search and then we just want to create that method And in that, we we want to um, pretty much grab this right here, the post controller index, the same thing. We can paste it in there, except we want to change the post variable. We don't want to, if we leave this at post, it's going to cause some issues for us in active admin and in some other areas. So we just want to change this to search posts. And that should be good. So if we save that, and then we go back and reload alright so now it's coming up um, you can see this the search button move down here um, we can just go in and edit the CSS real quick so we would go in the app folder and then um, assets style sheets application CSS um, we'll open that with notepad and remember this is a pre-made template so it has some stuff in here that we don't need um, we don't really need any of these right here the search text search submit we're not using that so we just want our search div and then we want the input but we only want the, the text input we don't want the button the submit button so we would do um, type text and then let's give it a width of 180 see if that fixes it alright so now we have the search box and we can give it a shot now but I don't think it's gonna work yet yeah alright so it is working um, 
you can see what happened here is we searched for the word updated and remember we're searching the body and the title um, granted these bodies aren't very long but that's what it's doing and it found updated in the title so if we clear it out it'll show all our posts uh, if we search for the word let's search for hello world and then we get this post because it found the hello world so now we have a full search on our site full text search um, and let me see what I want to do now um, hopefully we have enough time I want to get rid of this someone text and I want it to to display the user that created the blog post so we actually get a change around the active admin the admin users table of our database that it created when we when we installed active admin so if we go to our admin interface let's just admin and we want to log in now it automatically creates this admin users table for us and we can view it we can see all the fields it gives us all right and it gives us an ID and email and the email works as our login or our username um, and it gives us some statistics here but it doesn't give us a name it doesn't give us a username or just a name in general so what I want to do is add a a name um, column to this table. So we want to open up our um, command line, and we're going to use we're going to regenerate the admin user table. So let's go to our sites, and what we want to do is we want to generate a migration so we'll do rails g migration and we're going to do add name to add I'm sorry add name to admin user and we're going to add it's going to be name it's going to be called name and it's going to be a string so you can see what it's doing it says it that's what I love about Ruby on Rails is that it's so uh, it's explains everything that it's it's going to do. I mean, it's going to add the name field to the admin user table or model. Um, so let's run that. All right. So that was that ran. It ran, uh, so we gotta do the rake db migrate, or because it's not actually there yet, it, the table's not actually there yet until we run this command. All right, so that went well. So if we go into our directory in our db folder, migrate we can actually see the migration file right here uh, hold on a second and this is what it did it added the column um, it added name which is a string to admin users so now uh, we're not in the clear yet if we go back let's go back to our admin dashboard and then admin users and if we click view you can see down here it created the name it created the the uh, field the column name but if we edit you don't see a name field here if we add a new one you don't see a name here so we have to actually go into the configuration files uh, for active admin to, to display that so if we go to app admin and we want to go to uh, admin user All right, so the index we want to add the name column here. So uh, hold on one second. We just want to add a name so that it'll display in the index view. So if we just do uh, column email, change that to name. 
and then the form the form down here if we just copy this we can do this and just change this to name okay if we save that um, now if we go back admin users you can see it has this name column and we can edit my account and add my name so uh, one second what's this can't master sign protected edge oh we have to go to the um, model if we go to the app models and go to admin user we have to actually just add in um, name it basically has to be registered here or it's not going to work out for us so if we save that and reload we're back and it's asking us well I guess we don't I guess I'll put in my password just in case I'm not sure why it did that but log back in alright so now you can see it has my name down here see so that's how we add how we can add fields to our user table or our user model if we go to posts now we want if you remember we have a in our post table or our post model we have an author ID field or an author field we want to change that to be the admin user ID field so we do that by going into our models app yep app models and if we open up our posts we need to add we actually need to add in the association uh, you remember we did that a few chapters back so we have posts and a post will belong to a user it, it belongs to a category but it also belong to a user because a category has many posts and a user has many posts which we'll do next so we want to say belongs to and we want to put admin user because that's the name of the table it's not just user and save that and then go into the admin user model we can go to the admin user and do a has many we want to do has many posts save that reload here now what I want to do is I want the post table I want to I want it to show the username I mean the author's name so if we go into our other at active admin configuration file which is an app admin and we want to go into the post table and <clears throat> you can see we edit remember we edited the label to say blog post instead of post this is where you can do a lot of different types of um, configurations and customizations and if we want to if we want to edit this tape this table and all this this is the index view so we just need to do uh, index do create a block here and then we can define which fields we want in this table and I'm just going to actually copy and paste because we're running out of time here. Might have to continue this in another video. So, and you can change the name, the headings here. We want we want the admin user resource, uh, but we want the the column heading to say author. So if we save that, we go back and refresh. Now the author isn't there because we haven't added it to our post yet. You can see if we go to edit, we get an undefined method. That's right, we didn't change the um, the the field author ID to admin user ID, which we have to do. So and we can do that very easily with um, Peer Guardian. So let me open that. That's our remember that's our database tool. trying to find it not peer guardian PG admin 
connect to our database my Ruby blog and we can go to scheme schemas public and our tables you can see our tables right here and I apologize if this is a little confusing if you're not familiar with um, database structure but this PG admin is probably the easiest way to do it I mean we could do it in the command line um, but this is probably the easiest so you can see here if we click on posts and columns it shows us all our columns we have the author ID now our, our app is looking for admin user ID so we just need to change that we can just go to properties and change it to admin user ID okay and if we go back and reload now we have this admin user and it actually shows all our users so I'll choose myself for this post and update it all right so <laughs> can't Matt oh I'm sorry we have to go back to the model now we have to go to the um, admin user I'm sorry not the admin user the post model which is an app models post and you can see we have the author ID here we just want to change that as well and I apologize for this um, to having to do all this it's just something that happens when as you go along when you're programming so if we save that all right so now we have our user if we go to blog posts um, and let's actually create a user if we go to admin users and create a new user uh, we'll just say John Smith email is whatever John at Yahoo password alright so we have some restrictions on our passwords so now we have a new user so now if we go back to posts and we edit a post we can choose John we'll just grab we'll just give everybody a, um, an author Whoop, I clicked, I clicked new post uh, all right update that so now we have a really nice interface that we can create posts and users and all kinds of stuff all right so that looks good the last thing I want to do is on the dashboard I want to add an author column here as well so we need to go to um, app admin dashboard so I'm just gonna copy and paste here because it's quite a bit of code and this video is over what I wanted it to be already so um, so in the recent posts I'm just gonna paste in these columns and the only difference is I added this author column so if I save that and then we reload the dashboard and we have all our authors here and we can click on them they're, they're clickable and we can see all the information about that author and I'm gonna stop this video here and in the next part what we'll do is is have it updated in the front end as well which will be uh, much easier than what we just did and finally we'll add in some comment functionality so we can have comments on our posts and that should be it so I'll see you in the next part